what is up guys and welcome back to another video and today we are going to go over 10 things you need to know about thor and let's get straight on the list with number 10 thor has a complicated family he has a half brother named autumn who every now and then becomes demogurge the god eater who would kill gods and then consume them and gain their powers thor and autumn share the same mother but were not raised together Thor's father Odin brought him to Asgard when he was an infant where his wife, the goddess Frigga, acted as Thor's mother. It was not until many decades later that Thor learned the truth about who his real mother was. Thor also has various other half-brothers and half-sisters, his adoptive brother and enemy Loki, and a large extended family. Number 9. Before Thor was 20, he had fallen in love with the goddess Sif. In fact, when Sif was kidnapped by storm giants, and ended up as a prisoner of Hela, Thor offered his own life in exchange for Sif's freedom. The goddess of death was so impressed by the young thunder god's nobility that she let both of them go. Thor also had a human girlfriend named Jane Foster. For many years, Foster was a nurse employed by Dr. Donald Blake, Thor's first mortal host before becoming a doctor himself. Eventually, Foster was revealed to be deemed worthy to wield Thor's hammer, Molnir, when Thor was no longer able, adopting the name of Thor, the goddess of thunder, and joining the Avengers. Number 8. Superheroes often have some pretty unusual sidekicks or allies, and Thor is no different. It's hard to find a weirder pairing than Thor and his two goats. The goats are named Toothnasher and Toothgrinder, and they are his most trusted friends. They're usually shown flying Thor into battle as he rides through the air in a chariot behind them. Although he usually relies on his hammer to fly, there are times when he must transport other passengers or objects and that's when the goats come in handy. The two goats are first showed up in 1976's Thor Annual No. 5 but haven't made a huge number of appearances over the years. Number 7. Thor was the first superhero based on a god. His creator, Stan Lee, has frequently said that he believes comic book superheroes will one day be looked back on hundreds or even thousands of years from now as a kind of modern day mythology equivalent to the way we perceive Norse legends now. Lee did an impressive job of combining the two worlds when he dreamed up the God of Thunder. Thor is the son of Odin, the All-Father and Jord, the spirit of the Earth. While Thor may be the first superhero based on an actual god, Lee only chose to play around with the Norse mythology because he couldn't think of a human character who would realistically be stronger than the Hulk. He also felt that Greek and Roman gods have been done to death, so after turning to the Norse god Thor for inspiration, the character Thor was born. Number 6. Thor once spent several issues of the mighty Thor as a frog after falling prey to one of Loki's magical schemes. Loki is the adoptive brother and the arch nemesis of Thor. The storyline, which started in 1986 and lasted for four issues, saw Thor end up in Central Park and lead a clan of frogs into battle against a horde of rats. He eventually returned to Asgard to reclaim his identity, but not before leaving behind a small piece of Mjolnir for one of his allies, a frog named Puddlegulp. That frog eventually became a warrior known as Throg. After this, Thor was only halfway back to normal and became a half frog slash half man. Eventually, one of his friend and fellow god was able to return Thor to his fully normal self. Number 5. While Thor's powers have changed over time, like most of the other comic book superheroes, his ability to fly has remained relatively stable over the years. Although he technically isn't flying, in the Marvel Comics universe, when Thor needs to get from one place to another through the air, he throws his hammer into the sky and hangs onto the strap. The hammer then pulls him through the air to his destination. When he needs to hover in mid-air, he twirls the hammer around like a rotor of a helicopter, which keeps him suspended above the ground. Number 4. The Enchanted Hammer Molnir isn't the only weapon Thor uses in the Marvel Comics universe. He uses quite a few others. His magical belt of strength is also an important, if frequently overlooked, part of his arsenal. It enhances Thor's strength to almost double its otherwise very powerful level. It is used against his only most difficult foes, as Thor already has incredible powers on his own. He also uses a battle axe called John Jorn. John Jorn is nearly indestructible and blessed with Thor's own blood, giving it the ability to cut through almost anything. In Norse mythology, Thor's weapons are accompanied by magical iron gloves that would allow him to wield Mjolnir. Number 3. Thor's principal weapon is an enchanted hammer, Mjolnir. 
Molnir is typically depicted as a large, square-headed gray lump hammer. It has a short round handle wrapped in a brown leather culminating in a looped lanyard. The side of the hammer carries the inscription, Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Molnir was said to be forged in the heart of a dying star. The hammer gives Thor the ability to fly, weather manipulation, can raise the dead, as well as other superhero powers. Among its many powers is that it returns to the exact spot from which it is thrown and goes to Thor when summoned. No living being is able to lift the hammer unless they are worthy. This gives Thor the advantage to use Molnir to pin down his opponents because they are unable to lift it. Number 2. The character Thor is based on the Norse mythology of the same name. Thor is known as the God of Thunder. According to Norse mythology, Thor and the other gods of Asgard gain their immortality from eating the magical golden apples of Idun, which grow in Asgard and can be only picked by the goddess Idun. These apples also keep them looking young and healthy. This is also the case for the Marvel Comics version of Thor, who has periodically returned to Asgard in order to renew his immortality. A lot of people mistakenly think that Thor is immortal. He's not immortal, unless he returns to Asgard to eat these magical fruits. And number one, Thor is one of Marvel Comics' most popular characters. Thor is a powerful but arrogant superhero who debuted in the August 1962 issue of Journey into Mystery. He became extremely popular very quickly. In just a few years, Thor's popularity rose to the point where Marvel had to have the comic book character's full title and the full title of the series, the Mighty Thor protected by a trademark. The publisher was granted the trademark by the United States Patent and Trademark Office in 1970. That's a quick rise to fame in only a few years. And that is it for the video guys, as always thanks for watching, we hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all later.